guys, this is Kenjido, and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Uh, it has just turned over to 2019, so Happy New Year. And today, uh, I wanted to go over a follow-on technique to vector graphics, which is building a vector graphic library. So essentially what this does is anytime you make a vector graphic, you can store it in such a way that you can easily retrieve it again. And this is great for things like uh, objects that you reuse often, you don't have to keep redrawing them, especially if they're complex things that you don't want to have to keep manipulating nodes over and over again. Um, or if you're doing things like comics or even possibly animation, essentially anything where you want to be able to reuse vector objects that you create, this is a great uh, tool to have in your tool belt. Now, I'm not going to cover anything related to creating vector graphics in this tutorial. Uh, I have another tutorial that you can check out where I walk through making a jiggly puff all fully in vector graphics. So if you're wanting to learn how to make things in vector gra with vector graphics, check out that one. But this one is just about building the library. So let's jump into it. So to start off, let's go over what it is we're ultimately trying to achieve. So in a nutshell, essentially what I want to be able to do is go into this vector graphics menu, select preset shape, and be able to in here pick something that I've made previously and be able to reuse it very quickly in whatever project it is that I'm working on currently. So as you can see in this particular example, this is a chibi head that I had made prior and just by clicking in that preset menu I was able to drag the entire vector graphic instance with just one sweep. So how do we get there? Before we get into the mechanics of um, how you actually save one, I think it's important to look into how you set up your environment to do this. And the easiest way to do that is to go into this menu, this presets menu, where you can find all the existing shapes. Uh, you probably have some already that were provided by Paint Shop Pro. But if you go to this button here that says File Locations, what you'll see here is that there'll be a set of paths where preset shapes may be stored. Some of them may reference older versions of Paint Shop Pro. They should, there should at least be one path that references where things are currently saved. Um, now, if you're, if you're going to do a category like I have here, I have all of my chibi cartoon kinds of things here, I would recommend creating a subfolder. And just primarily because it'll make organization a lot easier. And the only thing you have to consider, though, is that if you're going to create stuff that are not related to this category, you'll have to update this folder or add a different path and change what the default is. But right now, for this example, I'm only going to be focusing on chibi related vector graphics. So uh, I'm just going to keep this folder set as it is. Okay, so to start off this example, um, I'll just create a very quick vector object that I'll use to store in my library. And essentially what this will be is just a new kind of chibi mouth, if you will. That's a little big. I'll make it a little bit smaller. Um, and again, just doing quick manipulations. It's going to be a very simple shape. I'm not too concerned about um, it being too complex. This is just for an example. So it's kind of a sad mouth. Okay, so now that we've created our vector object, we need to give it a unique name. And the way we do this is by clicking on the pick tool, selecting that object that we created, then coming to this button here, that says properties, clicking on that and giving it a unique name. Now I've already created a sad mouth name, so I'm going to create another one and give it a two. And what I would recommend in this case is to name it in such a way that it'll uh, facilitate sorting. It'll group things the way you want it to. So in this case, because I'm calling it Chibi, all the Chibi things are grouped together. I'm following it by mouth, so all the mouths will be grouped together. And then I'm giving it the qualifying final name to be able to uniquely identify it. So now that we've given it its name, now we can actually create the file. We can go to File, Export and shape and now when we click on here what it's asking for is another name but this is just the name of the file this doesn't have to do with the object's name so i'm going to create 
a similar name, just so it maps well. Hit OK. And now this shape is going to be in my preset library. So if I were to delete it, for example, now go back into my preset shapes. And what this is telling me, this warning is just saying I have in my paths, I have one path is nested in the other. And so it's just suggesting that there's two things maybe named the same thing, but it's just because the paths are overlapping. If you don't have a nested folder, you wouldn't run into this problem. So then now when I look in my chibi section and I look for this new mouth that I just created, there it is. And I can click on it and draw it. Little effort. So looking at this category window a little bit closer, um, you can see that, that although it doesn't show really well, that these names down here are what were defined in the properties. When we did the properties naming, this is where that name comes into play. So here's an example where I had created a shape, but I didn't actually give it a properties name, and it just called it what whatever my base shape was that I started with. And if you don't do the properties thing, but you create the shape, uh, this you'll just get a bunch of these and PaintShop Pro will complain at you and say you have shapes that all have the same name. So it's important to give the shapes different names. And you can see how, even like I mentioned, by giving the naming convention in such a way that it organizes your content, all of my mouths are together, the hair pieces are all together, um, eyes are all together, etc. So this will just help you out uh, by by selectively choosing names in a meaningful way. So like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different applications that you can use this for. One of the ones that I've been kind of playing with just from an experimentation standpoint is uh, creating comics with it. Uh, so in a comic, you have to constantly redraw the same characters in very similar poses, but maybe just different facial expressions. So what I've done is build up sort of a library, a very small one, but a library of different chibi-like character expressions, eyes, mouths, hair, um, to be able to create a comic. And a comic could be something like, hey man, what does a nosy pepper do? I don't know. What? gets all up in your face. Now when creating comics, um, if you're in the middle of your project and you find that a custom shape needs to be created, you can just as well in that kind of a context save that new shape following the same process and add it to your library. So whatever project you're working on, you can just be continually building your library so that whatever next project you do, you have even more shapes to work with. So it's a very scalable library building process. So a comic like this can be created very quickly once all of the library has been built. But even better is if I made a series of these comics, uh, being able to reuse the vector graphics and being able to just pull them straight from the preset menu. Um, it's fun, it saves you a whole lot of time, and it can make working with vector graphics a little less tedious. And capabilities like this are really important in PaintShop Pro uh, because unless if you have tools like Corel Draw, um, you'll you'll have to really manually build all of your vector graphics. Um, whereas Corel Draw can do you know line traces and be able to create vector graphics from images. Um, but if you want to have your own, you have to manually draw them, and it definitely wouldn't be worth it to have to redraw vector graphics over and over again. So. Having this library will be, in my opinion, essential for any type of regular vector graphic creation or vector graphic projects. So that's it. This is a pretty short one. Um, just wanted to get it out there because I felt like it was an important part to follow up with the original vector graphics video. Um, hope you guys have a great year. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. And if you'd like update, updates, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time.